Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Trevor John Wayne, and I am on the Hollywood Raw podcast talking about my career as a TMZ producer and all of the crazy shenanigans I had in my time working for them. Uh, not to mention dating celebrities like Aubrey O'Day and being written about uh, in books by Tori Spelling. Um, it's fun. We're just scratching the surface. I hope you enjoy because we're going to do it again. Hey, guys, welcome to the Hollywood Raw YouTube page. Make sure you drop a comment, like, subscribe. Do all the fun things. Follow. Follow everything. We're here to entertain you guys. What are you waiting for? Hurry up. Let's go. Enjoy. Trevor, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I've been wanting to get Trevor on for a long time because Trevor was doing, you know, our job during the thick of it when it was crazy, when it was wild, but when it was also fun, when the industry was just different. I guess, Trevor, you started, it wasn't really the Instagram era. Like it was, but it wasn't like what Instagram is now. So it was a whole different, you know, we're not even talking that long ago, but it was just a different time. I just thought about this last night. Like, yeah, before Instagram, the whole paparazzi, TMZ kind of job was just a different type of landscape how did you get your job at tmz well it's a good question it's a good uh, way to lead into all this and you're right it was before um what instagram is today so um i actually remember i think my third instagram photo was at the uh courthouse in which lindsey lohan was constantly frequenting <laughs> not oh it was lax court it wasn't beverly hills because she was she was there a lot too but um yeah this was a uh, pre pre-Instagram era for the most part. I got hired by TMZ in February of 2008, boys, okay? Jeez. That's over 10 years Way ago, back. damn it. And uh, basically, short version is I'm from San Diego. I was going to junior college, kind of spinning my wheels in the mud, you know what I mean? And a buddy of mine who had lived in LA, he was my brother's best friend, called me up one day and goes, dude, what the fuck are you doing down in San Diego? You hate school. You've you just kind of trying to figure it out. He goes, you want to be in the film industry. He goes, you need to be in Los Angeles. So my roommate just moved out. Why don't you come in and take her spot? And I said, fuck it. Let's do it. I said, I'm, I'm done with school. I'm, I'm basically left with math and economics, which is something I will never be able to get over. So I moved up to Los Angeles and a very weird, special, magical series of events happened that led me to getting hired at TMZ. Step one was going out. When I lived in Los Angeles, I knew just going outside, anything could happen. You could run into anybody who could literally change your life. So going out, getting acclimated, getting familiar with the nightclub scene. I remember, uh, you know, getting used to alcohol at, at this age. I was, I was a ripe 21 year old, just about to turn 22. And I remember going to, Oh, I wish I could remember. I wish I could remember the club's name, but I can't. Where was it? It was in Hollywood. Um, it was super, super trendy for young Hollywood back Ledoux. in. Uh, it was Ledoux. Fucking A. <laughs> name it, Dax. <laughs> it was Ledoux. Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> Okay, so I'm hammered. I get hammered in Ledoux. I come out of Ledoux and there is this guy standing out front, just one of them, super tall, skinny, looked like a fucking urban cowboy, all black. He had like a trench coat on and a, and a black cowboy hat. And I'm drunk and I see that he's holding a nice camera. So I walk up to him and I go, hey, bro, I'm a cameraman too. What are you doing out here? No, 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 no. And he goes, dude, you're hammered right now and I'm working. Get out of here. He goes, here's my card, beat it. So I put the card in my wallet, stumble home. I wake up the next morning and I ask my roommate, hey, what's this card? And it was a TMZ card. And the guy, my, my friend goes, I'm not really sure. He goes, I think it's some celebrity tabloid website TV show thing. He goes, hold on to it. So I hold on to it. About two weeks later, my roommate who was borderline an alcoholic needed to go get beer at like 1.29 a.m. And at the time, I was living in Studio City, and we lived walking distance from the Ralphs on Vineland and Ventura. So he looks at his watch. He goes, get the fuck up. We need to go get beer. I'm like, Jesus Christ, dude. So we get up. We walk over to Ralphs. And as we enter the parking lot on the far side from where the supermarket is, we see this couple walking. And they are walking. It's 1.30 it's in the morning. Everything in this complex is closed except for Ralphs. 
However, this couple has parked on the far side and they are walking slowly towards Ralph's. And there's two cameramen shooting them. One is shooting video, one is shooting stills. And I remember this like it was yesterday. I remember exactly how it looked. I remember the, the light on top of the guy's camcorder. I remember the flash photography going off. And my roommate, I don't know how he knew this, <clears throat> hadn't been in LA that long, but he could smell her. He looks at me and goes, it's Britney Spears. And I go, bullshit. And he goes, let's get up there. He goes, I swear to God, it's Britney Spears. He wasn't lying. We get up there. It is Britney Spears. He looks at me and he goes, do you have that card on you? And I go, uh, yeah. He goes, call it and tell them that Britney Spears is here. He goes, I'm going in the store to get beer. <laughs> so he leaves. <laughs> I whip the card out. I call it. And the legend Eric Beagle picks mm -hmm. up. Hello? And I go, hey, uh, uh, Britney Spears I, 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 I've got a location of Britney Spears. He goes, where, where? He goes, we've been looking for her all night. Where is she? I go, she's at Ralph's on Vineland and Ventura. Hangs up the phone. I don't even know what the fuck's going on. Like within three minutes, I'm seeing black Mercedes, black BMWs, black Escalades storming the parking lot. These guys get out. I'm just seeing flash photography, cameras, camcorders. They get out. I'm like, overly stimulated with what's going on right now. And he comes up to me, he goes, where is she? Where is she? Where is she? He goes, I'm the guy that you just called. I go, oh, she's in the store. He goes, fantastic. We've been looking for her all night. We'll just wait. I'm like, what the fuck is going on right now? And he <laughs> goes, oh, we work for TMZ. Uh, uh, Beagle hands me his car keys. This is where the, the trust was built. He goes, kid, I need you to move my car. It's parked in the red. He goes, just, just, just scoot it over into a parking spot. So I'm like, yeah, sure. I hop in his car. I move it. Come back out. Here comes Brittany. They shoot the crap out of her. And before he leaves, I go, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I think I can do what you guys do. I'm a cameraman, et cetera, et cetera. Just moved to LA, need a job. And he goes, cool. He goes, call this number tomorrow and tell the woman that you were the one that tipped us off. Do you guys know who that woman was? Diana Dazareth. Of course. <laughs> so I call the next day and she picks up the phone. And she goes, hello, TMZ. And I go, hi, uh, my name's Trevor. Uh, last night, I provided you guys a tip for Britney Spears. She goes, no, 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 no. We were already on it. We, 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 we're we, not going to pay you. For I'm like, mm, mm, I don't, I'm not looking for a tip, lady. I'm looking for a gig. She goes, oh. She goes, are you a cameraman? I go, yeah. She goes, great. We'd like to meet you. We're hiring. Of course you're hiring. I'm always fucking hiring. And uh, she goes, bring in your resume, your real whatever and meet me at sunset where the old office was. So I put on a collared shirt, <laughs> cruise into the office. That's already making me laugh, just a collared uh -huh. shirt. Unnecessary. I don't, get, I don't get past the little security room where uh, you check in your badge and you go back behind the glass door. She came over there and sat down on the lobby couch with me. And I remember this like it was yesterday. I go, hi, Diana, my name's Trevor, nice to meet you. Here's my resume, my reel. She literally takes the folder and goes, down the it. couch through the fucking thing down the couch and she goes who's this and i'm like uh that's so and so she goes great she goes who's this and i go uh what was she so pointing so. to is it like pictures of people Celebrities? or something no nah, she's just yeah yeah just like making them up like who's this person who's this person and then i don't remember who, who the first two was were but i remember who the third one was because i didn't know who it was at the time she goes who's rumor willis and i'm like oh, willis oh. I don't fucking know. She goes, it's Bruce Willis's daughter. If you're going to work, you're going to need to know this type of stuff. I'm like, okay, Bruce Willis's daughter. Rumor. Got it. She goes, okay, great. Uh, when can you start? I'm like, tomorrow. She goes, you start tomorrow. I'm like, what the That's fuck? Awesome. You know what's funny that you say that is Harvey threw away my resume the first time I brought it into him. <laughs> like, I worked so hard on that resume. And yeah. he, it, it's not about your accolades. It's about are you good at what you can do? Do you 100%. have talent? Is there is there potential for you? And I worked really hard on that fucking resume. And he literally threw it in the trash and was like, let me see the video. Like, it was crazy. So it's funny that Diana did that. Yeah, I mean, it takes a really specific person. Um, on paper, you could you could be one thing, but when you're you know in the heat of the battle and you're out in the streets in Beverly Hills and there are so many different X factors you can't control that you need to be able to adapt to and overcome and be able to create a producible piece of footage for a nationally broadcasted television show, mm -hmm. not many people can do that. So Trevor, tell me, the word paparazzi is obviously a controversial word. Yeah. What 
did you or do you consider yourself? Um, well, at the end of the day, we were doing very paparazzi like um, mm -hmm. activities work. But I actually got into a recent um, debate with a, a really good friend of mine um, about we were producers. We are producers. We were producing, producing content. Yeah, for a TV show and a worldwide um, celebrity news website, uh, a very mm -hmm. credible one at that, one that prides themselves on breaking news. Um, so we weren't just covering Lindsay Lohan going to court, which at the end of the day was global news, but we were covering everything from like uh, what comes to mind right now, like Aaron Andrews, famous uh, female sports uh, reporter who was, you know, having a guy follow her around the country and attach cameras to her peephole in her um hotel room a hole like, through the walls yeah 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 like i remember covering that court case um so what were we, we well were... The, it's interesting because again if if you were working for a a reality show they would call you a producer but because yes. it's tmz people change the name people dax yep change it what? to paparazzi when in right. reality yes it is street producing yeah. there is that connotation of being out there in the wild but again if it was a bigger camera a tv show camera you would instantly be a camera crew you wouldn't be a paparazzi 100 percent. yeah if you had a girl who was wearing a dress and had a microphone and she was conducting these interviews while being filmed it wouldn't be considered even if the side of your camera said nbc news suddenly oh, yeah. you're a camera crew and not yep. a paparazzi Yep. When there is no difference out there, when there's two people with cameras. Yeah, 100%. So I think especially with TMZ being the number one um, that they are, were at the time, uh, we had a lot of access to cover different sorts of content that wasn't necessarily paparazzi related. I remember going to like the women's convention in Long Beach, mm -hmm. and I literally was the only male there. It's a women's convention, and they send me to go shoot uh, Maria Shriver <laughs> or something like that. It's like there's no paparazzi here, but um, yeah, at the end of the day, we were doing paparazzi stuff. Honestly, dude, we're field producers, and that's uh, where I'm trying to uh, now get back into the game by um, – you know, using that history that I've had of being able to really, really, um, ju just being able to execute like OTF, like on the fly interviews and like stuff that Adam, you know, like people can't do what we've done. And that's why TMZ had such a revolving door and such a short timeline on most people's careers there because they couldn't hack it. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. We started at, you know, it's funny. If someone goes into the line of work now, I don't think it's going to be good for them. We just started at the right time that it just hit very well. Now, if someone were to kind of take over the job now, they're going to struggle. I mean, I, I you know, like you and I, we already built those relationships, and they're not easy to make. And we hit when it was right. fresh. And now you just become kind of um, someone who's just – I don't know. It's, it's just difficult. Do you remember your first shot when you became a camera guy, the first one that actually kind of made – did well <clears throat> yeah the, the first person i shot was brad garrett and i was still oh. in training um yeah right was well, that well, in the midst of all of his shit too um this was in february of 2008 i was still training i remember being on rodeo rodeo boulevard and the guy who was training me spotted him and he's like holy shit that's brad garrett get your camera out of your backpack and i'm like fumbling for it and i'm like who the fuck is brad garrett and he goes, the big guy from Everybody Loves Raymond. And I go, oh, no. So I walked up to him, and he had made a stab at me like not – oh, he asked me if I had gone to college. And I said, uh, yeah, I went to UCLA film school. And he's like, oh, that's – that's what this has come to. <laughs> You're out here shooting me after going to UCLA film school. And then TMZ very nicely had my back, and they ran a little history on Mr. Garrett and realized that he's a college dropout – and um, that's how I remember my first, uh, my first shoot. <laughs> yeah, Brad for him being, he was always kind of a dick to any yeah, camera not, guy not, that not, was not out the there. coolest. How, how did uh, speaking yeah, of that? So, like, we we obviously know how some celebs react to camera guys out in the street. Not all of them. There are some celebs that are super kind, amazing, open arms, want to talk to cameras. There are some that are not so well. But how did? like the average person treat you or react to what you were doing in the streets? Honestly, dude, I feel that I was one of the most well-received, to be honest. Yeah. Because I really like carried myself um, 
in a way where I was empathetic with the people I was shooting. And I would always, always wear one of their shoes when approaching them. And I feel in doing that, I was more accepted. I would mm -hmm. talk to them. I would open my conversations with them a way that would just kind of break their guard down. And I treated everybody with respect. I really wasn't out there being paparazzi. A paparazzi, a lot of times they have negative connotation because they're antagonistic. They're doing things to get a reaction out of you in order to make their stills more appealing or their video more entertaining. Whereas me, TMZ paid a salary. So whether I shoot something or not, I'm getting paid. But at the end of the day, I know I'm going to run into this person again. And I don't know where I'm, I'm young. I'm, I'm in LA. This is my first job. I don't really know where this is going to take me. And I don't want to start burning bridges out in the street with some of the most powerful, uh, influential people that are in this, uh, in this city. So I feel like I was well received the stories that I have, um, uh, from just being on the job. I don't think most would have the opportunity to have relationships built with celebrities or projects working on with with celebrities if you if you didn't treat them well if you didn't if you didn't respect them mm -hmm. so i feel like i got respect yeah. due to me respecting for the most part so when you started working what was your area everyone i guess you know had an area to cover where was your section of town that you'd cover so I like to describe it. I don't know if you guys have had this described uh, yet before, but I always looked at TMZ really kind of like mili militaristically, whereas TMZ, like where Dax was inside, it was kind of like the headquarters. And they were giving out orders to the soldiers out on the field, but there was a line of maybe miscommunication or misunderstanding as to what's really going on on the battlefield and what information is coming back to the headquarters. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of shit going on in the street that really needed to be filtered out and just give the office what they need. But I originally started uh, daytime mm -hmm. and I am a born night owl. I remember being like four years old and not being able to go to bed before midnight. So <laughs> initially starting for TMZ was really tough for me because I had to be on the street by like nine, which for you guys is probably no big deal. It's 941 right now and I'm still kind of waking up. <laughs> but I originally started on Bedford, which okay. is a street in Beverly Hills, and it it's is like a medical right, district. I was going to say, for people that have never been here or don't know where it's – Bedford is like, what, two streets over from Rodeo? Two streets west of Rodeo. Yeah, but it is it is a huge – when you saw the old Michael Jackson videos of him like walking out of Mickey Fine Pharmacy, that was the Bedford area. So it's like yep. where they've got – you know optometrists and medical mm. offices mm. and dermatologists and all this yeah. kind of stuff yeah. it's on that street but it's still filled with celebrities a lot yeah i mean the, all these celebrities were going to the doctor i remember shooting uh, denzel washington kim kardashian was getting her nails done if you remember that nail salon it was just like a weekly thing so that's where i started um do you but start, I remember, question would you say yeah. there's more celebs on a regular basis on Bedford than there is on Rodeo because people think oh. Rodeo, but that's not the case, right? Hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. Rodeo has just got its quintessential, you know, Hollywood fancy shop flair to it. Nobody would go to this, you know, like Bedford was like a, a bunch of buildings made of bricks. It wasn't necessarily very appealing. Um, there was a little like French bakery and a nail salon. So I don't think anybody who didn't know what they, what we knew would go for that. But yeah, Bedford was probably the busiest street in Beverly Hills at the time. Crazy. But I was, I was working daytime and I remember, <laughs> I remember being so bad at the mornings that I would wake up, I would pick a celebrity that would be the one I was looking for that day. And if Diana had ever called me and asked what you're doing, I'm like, Oh, fucking looking for Sylvester Stallone. She goes, what do you mean? And I'm like, oh, he's at the Peninsula Hotel. I see his car. I'm just waiting for him to come out. All the while, I'm in bed, guys. Okay? <laughs> I remember I remember taking showers and leaving my two-way Motorola walkie-talkie radio phone on the toilet just in case it would go off so I could answer it. And it did multiple times. I'm shutting the water off in the shower to pick up the phone. And, uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm fucking driving over here and looking for so-and-so. Justin Foley from TMZ would always say, T. Wayne, you're working harder not to work. He goes, it would be easier if you just did the job. <laughs> <laughs> Which he, he was probably right.
But standing out on the street for 10 hours a day used to get a little mundane. So yeah. when I think back uh, about our time where you were at TMZ, I was at TMZ, I didn't know a lot of the camera guys out there. It just, we didn't cross paths a lot. We didn't have a lot of the interaction because a lot of the guys would either come in before I came in in the morning to drop off their tapes or they would come in after I left to drop off their tape. So like I just, mm. we didn't cross paths. I would only see people maybe at holiday parties or something like that, right? Or yeah. when someone got a really good good footage the night before, they'd come in to talk about it on the TV show. Yeah. The thing that stands out the most in my mind with you, Trevor, is Aubrey O'Day. <laughs> because <laughs> that became such a big story that Aubrey O'Day and you dated. Yep. And, and how we were we were talking about it. So tell us what how did that happen? And there you go, Aubrey O'Day on Playboy. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> hold on to him. You gotta hold on to these memories. So so you <laughs> dated you dated Aubrey O'Day. Number yep. one. How did that go down? It became a huge story because th- it was essentially uh, don't take personally, but paparazzi. And her, she was dating a paparazzi at the time. That was the story that went out. So yeah. how did it happen? Your boy was the uh, 2012 Adnan Galib. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was, it was a Valentine's uh, weekend. It was, Valentine's was coming up. And I remember being in uh, Venice beach, just got back to my car, looking at my watch about four hours left on my shift. I'm like, I think it's time to go home. You know what I mean? And then Diana rings me up. She goes, hey, what are you doing? And I'm like, hey, I'm in Venice Beach uh, cruising. I'm, tr- I'm trying to get the fuck out of here. I'm trying to go home. You know, we're done today. I, I got one shot. We're done today. And she goes, <clears throat> well, if you're, not, if, if, if you're looking for anything to do, she goes, Aubrey O'Day is going to be in Brentwood at this little bakery. And I'm like, Aubrey O'Day, shit. I remember being like 19 in my parents' house watching Making the Band and going, who the fuck is that? She is hot. <laughs> banging you know what i mean so i'm like fuck it i can I, i'd be happy to go shoot that so i cruise up from venice beach i get over into brentwood and she shows up and it's kind of a setup there's a bunch of other paps there and she's doing like this pre-valentine bakery purchasing fucking thing right and so uh she gets out of the car and i just start talking to her and she immediately goes you're cute i'm like oh shit okay let go yo Valentine's Day is coming up, Aubrey. What we got on the ticket? She goes, nothing. You want to be my Valentine? And I'm like, ho, ho, yeah, like whatever, right? So she goes into um, the bakery, does her little thing, comes back out, a little bit more flirtations, caught on film, just her and I back and forth. She was really just talking to me. And then <clears throat> I'm like, I, I, I got a business card in my pocket. So she got in her car. She got in the passenger seat of her car and then her assistant got in the driver's seat and they start to, they start to leave the parking lot. And so I like kind of put my hand out and wait for them to stop. And I pull my business card out and I go, Hey, if you were serious and you want to hang out sometime, give me a call. And so I hand it to her assistant and Aubrey takes it and she goes, okay. She's like, talk to you later, cutie and drives off. I think nothing of it. <laughs> Two weeks later on Super Bowl Sunday, I'm with my buddy Josh in Hollywood watching the game and I get a text. She goes, Hey, it's Aubrey. What are you doing? And I'm like, Aubrey who? And she's like, oh, day, you idiot. Like, I'm like, is this really you? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, okay. And I'm like looking at my buddy Josh. I'm like, yo, fucking Aubrey O'Day is texting me. He's like, get after it. So <laughs> she had lived in uh, Orange County at the time. And um, I'm from San Diego. So I would often jam down to San Diego on a weekend to hang out with my friends, see my family. And so the first time we ever went on a date was when I was coming back up from San Diego. And we met at the yard house at Mm -hmm. the Irvine Spectrum. So Dax, whenever you drive by the Irvine Spectrum, you'll know that uh, me and Aubrey O'Day had our first date there. Yeah, exactly. So (laughs) that's how it started is I I shot her one day and she was hitting on me with a Valentine's weekend on on the horizon. That's so crazy, dude. Yeah, so So wild. That's amazing. So did she, obviously she knew what you did. So it was like, did she want to know the insights of it? Or was it like a real like, hey, let's just see what we each other are about? Um, You know, she never held what I did against me. That's cool. She, 
Yeah. And the fact that it kind of all started with me shooting her, it was just kind of this, I don't have any questions. I know exactly what you're doing out here. Um, and yeah, it was, it was an organic, uh, start to our relationship. And what, so what, what did she think of all the press coverage? Cause there was a lot of press over the fact that you two were dating. Did she, did she lean into it? Did she go, oh, I don't like this. Like what, what was the vibe? <laughs> She leaned into it um, in a good way. She wasn't trying to exploit it, uh, uh, use and abuse it. She was really cool, honestly. She was really genuine. And she would bring me to a lot of her functions because at the time she was uh, doing The Apprentice, I believe. Mm -hmm. And this is when she had her crazy red hair. And she really didn't look like the Aubrey I had kind of been infatuated with years before. But it was so cool to to meet her and have this experience of like dating a celebrity and going to events and seeing her work life and kind of getting this behind the scenes, especially being a paparazzo is going to these functions and meeting people like Lou Ferrigno and um, whoever else was on the show at the time. Um, but she was, she was very genuine about it, to be honest. What was the vibe like from the office? Like, did Harvey say anything to you about this? Or what was everyone like? Harvey never said anything. How did Harvey never said anything. Um, Diana never really said anything, but obviously they knew. But there was nothing in the contract that said we couldn't date celebrities. We're not sharing secret information. We're not withholding any information. We're not doing anything that would jeopardize our time or responsibilities for work. But uh, there was always this like, one of these looks, you know, like, mm -hmm. and so the, there was this one night where Aubrey was at Mr. Chow in Beverly Hills. If you don't know what Mr. Chow is, it's a very delicious Chinese restaurant. Uh, <laughs> and this is when I had been shifted over to night crew of TMZ. And this is when I was thriving, baby. Okay. You know what I mean? Night owl working <laughs> night crew, loving it. So she goes, Hey, I'm at Mr. Chow. Come over here. And I'm like, fuck. Like I look at my watch and I'm like, oh my God, it was like maybe 9 p.m., right? And night crew starts at six. <clears throat> so of course I fucking go over there. So I put my camera in my car, cruising to Mr. Chow. Trippy experience being a paparazzo who shot many people coming out of Mr. Chow, but never having gone in to Mr. Chow himself until this night. And I walk in, I'm like, holy shit, this is fucking weird. And she's sitting over in the corner with a bunch of um, apprentice cast. Lou Ferrigno. Um, there was an African-American woman. I can't remember her name at the time. Everybody was very nice. Didn't get to eat Mr. Chow, unfortunately, because I showed up kind of late. Really un unfortunate. But Aubrey and I get up and she goes, hey, babe, the, uh, the Uber's out front. Let's get out of here. I'm like, oh, no. I can feel what's about to happen. I know the boys are out front waiting for me to fucking exit, right? So... We walk outside, there's the paps. I quickly get into the Uber with Aubrey and she, loving it, rolls the back window down and the cameras are in the back window. And I'm like half hiding, but I don't want to look like I'm hiding. So I remember Diana seeing those the next morning. She goes, what were you doing? And I'm like, it was my lunch. I'm like, am I not entitled to a 30 minute lunch, Diana? <laughs> <laughs> so Har Harvey never, uh, never grilled me for it, but they were like, what? It was this lingering thing of Trevor mm -hmm. was out to dinner with Aubrey, but it was my fucking lunchtime boys. You know, how not long did you guys actually <laughs> date for a half hour? Uh, not long. It was a uh, firework. I like to call it. It was uh, exciting, fun, fast, but it blew up very quickly. So I don't know. Three months tops. No. Okay. That's still cool, man. I mean, listen, that's something. Um, it was cool. Like, it's just a cool experience. And I guess like it was like genuine too. Like it was like, no, I actually enjoyed hanging with her. So for the most part, uh, for the most part. Yeah. I think I was no, probably that's... the one who was less genuine than her, honestly. Yeah. What do you mean by that? I heard you say that earlier. Why Why were you just enjoying the, the moment or like, why do you say less genuine? Um, well, to be honest with you, and I'll admit it, there's this one time where I was kind of just losing interest with it. I really wasn't genuinely um, um, in, in like with her. You know what I mean? Like, it just wasn't clicking for me. But I really liked dating her because she was a fun person. And I didn't really want to let that go. And when you start dating somebody, it's really hard to retract into just a friendship and still be able to go out, especially when she's a celebrity. Like, it's just there's there's plenty to write stories about if if that were to be the case so i kind of knew that there was like a finite time left with being able to experience 
um, something with her. But there was this one time, I don't feel good about it, but I'll share it with you two um, and everybody else who's fucking listening. But I lived in Studio City at the time and she had stayed over one night and the next morning we got up to go to this uh, little cafe on Tahunga. And um, I had sent a text out to a friend of mine saying, hey, me and Aubrey are gonna go get breakfast. Maybe you wanna shoot it. He shows up. So does another fucking guy. So does another fucking guy. You know what I mean? They just, the word just gets passed around. And I have the photo. I could probably find it right now. But when we exit the cafe, I'm holding one of Aubrey's dogs. She's holding one of her dogs. Adorable photo, but she looks <laughs> pissed. Oh, she didn't want anybody Rightfully to know. Rightfully so. Rightfully so. It wasn't that she didn't want anybody to know, but she's not stupid. And I think she knew that I had leaked where we were mm. it was the first time i had ever done it she had brought me to many many different functions prior to that where we had been photographed together that's how you guys know about all this is it's been photographed but for me to do it was something that i think uh bruised our relationship i didn't feel good about it um but that's the part where it comes maybe a little less less genuine i'm trying to no. google the photos right now let me see if i can find it <laughs> It's, I mean, that's just, it's a, it's, do you guys still talk by any chance or have you guys? Um, seldom. Um, we're still friends on Facebook if, if that counts. Yeah. Yeah. Here and there. Uh, thanks. Thanks to the birthday app. I'll, I'll send out a happy birthday when I, when I see it. <laughs> oh, I'm looking it. through. Let's see. Can you guys see this? Oh yeah. Look at your boy, huh? Look at it. Got guys. the Sandy flip flops on here, Adam. You know what I mean? Got the SD pods hat on. <laughs> but if you zoom into her face, which I will, that's not happy. Yeah. Yeah. Not not pleased. So I'll I'll say it here and now. Uh gentlemen, if you happen to be dating a female celebrity, do not uh exploit the relationship that you two are trying to build together because uh it won't please her. <laughs> Tell me one other thing, um, I remember like Tori Spelling writing in a book about you or writing about you. What what was the story behind it? Because I, I don't know the details. I just remember seeing it. What did she say? So this is one of my favorite stories, one of my favorite moments in my life, to be honest with you. And this is where TMZ became a little bit more. All these things were learning lessons. The Abrio Day experience, all of this had built me in years later to carry myself better and to treat people better. Um, so... Um, what happened was, is I had gotten fired from TMZ, like maybe twice at this point. I was the first cameraman in TMZ history to be fired and rehired. Um, I got started in February of 2008, nine months in to that run, I got canned because I was taking the job completely for granted. It came to me, Britney Spears got me the job. Like it landed almost quite literally in my lap. Um, so I took it for granted. This is fucking easy to get jobs out here in LA. No. So I got fired nine months into my first run. Three months later, the next February, I got rehired. And I worked for quite a long time. I think I did a full three-year contract and then it stopped. Um, I was kind of doing stuff in between. And then um, one of our cameramen, Josh Hoover, had broken his leg. And at the mm -hmm. time, he was the Malibu cameraman. And Malibu, if you're not familiar with Los Angeles, is like at the perimeter edge of the TMZ 30 mile zone. It's way the fuck out there. So I was plugging Diana all the time, like, yo, can I come back? Can I come back? Can I come back? And she was like, no, 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 no. And then one day they call me and they go, hey, Josh Hoover broke his leg. He's out for six weeks and we're short staffed. Would you like to take his spot? I'm like, oh my God, the fucking clouds have parted. The sun is shining on me. I go, yes, I will absolutely take this. So I remember having a meeting with Charles and Charles was like, look, bro, six weeks, not a fucking day more. I'm talking 42 days. You're out of here. He goes, we're only putting you in because quarterback Josh is injured. I'm like, all right. So I get in there and I was working my ass off. I was working full shifts, Dax. You were actually working this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Full 10 hour shifts, not going home early, not sneaking off. I was in Malibu. I mean, not a bad place to be, to be honest. Really slow sometimes, but absolutely beautiful. So 
in Malibu, there's only one of everything. There's one supermarket. There's one sushi joint. There's one Italian restaurant. There's only one. So these celebrities, whatever they were craving that day or errands they needed to run, they could only go to that one spot. So I ran into Tori Spelling and she recaps it in this book. It's called Tori Spelling's Uncharted Territory. And it begins... Or you can find the story rather on. I page. love how you have everything accessible for us. Playboy, this, like you're ready to go. <laughs> page thirty on Tori Spelling's Uncharted Territory is where she begins to describe her experiences with paparazzi, and she compares New York paps to L.A. paps to Malibu paps. And she talks about how New York paps are super aggressive. They don't care if the kids are crying. It's all short lens shit. They're flashing you. She talks about LA being a little bit more distant. Guys are using long lenses. The weather's better. It's easier to capture. And then she talks about Malibu and how these guys are like almost camouflaged with how they capture photos is they are wearing board shorts and flip flops and they kind of just blend into the bushes or the, 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 the sand on the beach, if you will. But I had a, I had three run-ins with her. And the first one begins at Malibu Country Mart on a Sunday. It's her and her husband, Dean. I don't think they had the kids, but they roll up on motorcycles. And if you've ever been to Sunday Malibu Country Mart, it's absolutely jam-packed in the summer. And at the time, Tori was kind of feuding with her mom. And there was some story going on. And it was kind of a kind of a kind of a top story that needed to be addressed. So I get there and they are like surrounded by fans, her and Dean. They're surrounded by fans, asking for autographs, taking pictures, and just using my judgment. I go, I don't think this is the best opportunity, especially to get a sound bite, which is what TMZ is 100% focused on. I could shoot somebody from the back. I could shoot the back of their head as long as they're audibling you know, some dialogue. That's the whole point is to get the celebrity to talk. And so I go, I don't think that this is going to be really a, a producible setting for me to ask Tori about the feud that she has with her mom. So I didn't, um, I shot them real like lax a days ago. Hey, how you doing? What's going on Sunday? Yada, yada. Uh, I turned the footage in the next day. Charles calls me and Charles rips, rips me dude. Like to the point where like, we're going to fire you over this. And I'm like, dude, it's not even that crazy of a story. And I see her quite literally every other day because there's nothing to do in Malibu. And if she's going to the store, I'll see her. Like she drives a fucking Range Rover with this plate. I know who it is. So I said, relax, dude, I will see her in two days. And I promise you, I will ask her about the story. That's what happened. Two days later, she comes back to the country mart and she's carrying, I think Stella is her daughter's name. Mm -hmm. And I go, hey, Tori, I go, uh, a little feud going on with your mom, everything okay, et cetera, et cetera. And she kind of looks at me pissed and then looks at her daughter and she goes, are me and grandma fighting? She looks back at me. She goes, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, Fuck. And she kind of storms off and I, I could tell that I upset her. So very quickly, I run to my car. I ditch the camera in the car and I run back to her car. She's pulling out and she's in the passenger seat, super tinted windows. And I knock on her window and like show her like I'm unarmed. I don't have anything. <laughs> no camera. Can you roll down your window? And reluctantly, she rolls her window down like three quarters of the way. And she goes, what? And I go, hey, Tori, I go, my name's Trevor. I work at TMZ. And uh, over the weekend, I almost lost my job because I didn't ask you about this thing. I go, you were here on Sunday with your husband and it looked like a really nice scene and you guys were enjoying yourselves and I really didn't want to ruin your day. So I didn't ask you. I go, but I almost lost my job. It is my job to ask these like, you know, kind of personal questions. I go, I just want to let you know that I really didn't mean to upset you today. And I hope that like you can forgive me for intruding into, you know, your personal life today. And she pauses and she goes, that's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me in your position. And I go, well, I'm just being honest. She goes, thanks. And that was it. So we had three other run-ins after that. And she very well recaps them like to the T, like the way she writes about them in the book is like, it has, it's like choked me up in the past because this is just me treating somebody the way that I would want to be treated if I was in her position. And I couldn't imagine what it would be like to have this bearded dude run up to you with a camera and start asking you questions. Like, I don't think that would be like very fun. So I would always do my best to 
curate the experience to cater to their feelings. So me saying sorry, I genu I genu genuinely was sorry. I didn't. I don't want to upset you. It's not what I'm here to do. So I had seen her at um, PC Greens, which is like an organic grocery store on the PCH in Malibu. I saw her a few days later. <clears throat> Saw her go in and I waited for her to come back out. When she came back out, I go, hey, Tori, what's up? Just no stories. I just wanted, I needed to get a shot. And she covers her face really quick. And she goes, no, 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 not today. I don't have any makeup on. I go, Tori, you're Tori Spelling. You're beautiful. I go, you look great today. I go, the sun's shining on you. I go, we got this coastal breach, bre beach breeze. I go, it's all good. I go, I literally just wanted to ask if you have like, you know, an organic recipe that you'd like to share. So she like real slowly drops her guard, opens up, gives me a sound bite. I go, thanks. Um, I had seen her pass a few more times in Malibu. Didn't want to shoot her because, you know, I've been shooting her kind of consistently, um, but like a week or two passed and I hadn't shot anything in a while and I needed a shot. So I saw her leave Ralph's supermarket and, uh, a lot of celebrities rent beach houses for the summer and it's a small community. You know where they're all staying. So I knew she was going home. She leaves Ralph's. I get behind her. I follow her to her beach house. She pulls into her driveway and she sits in the car for like literally like 10 minutes. And I'm like, what the fuck is she doing, dude? Like I get out of my car and I just kind of like wave from a distance and she immediately opens the door. She goes, oh, it, it, it's you. She goes, I thought you were somebody else. I didn't want to get out and get shot. I go, Tori, look, look, honey. It's been slow out here. I need a shot, okay? And uh, <laughs> can you help me out? She goes, yeah, I can help you out if you help me out. I'm like, uh, sure, what do you need? She goes, I got a lot of groceries in the car. Can you help me bring them inside? <laughs> I go, are you, are you serious? And she goes, yeah, like put your camera down and help me bring these groceries in. I'm like, okay. So I go over to her white Range Rover and I scoop up as many groceries from the back as I can and I follow her into her beach house. And I get inside, place is a fucking mess. I mean, she's got two toddlers. She's got her husband, Dean. And there's just like shit everywhere. Just like you would expect like a mom on summer vacation. I didn't think twice about anything. I didn't, nothing in my head was like, what can I take use? It was just, okay, Tori, do you want me to put the fucking milk in the fridge too? Like, do you need help <laughs> opening this jar of pickles? And we kind of like just lingered in there for a couple minutes. And then she was like, okay, uh, do you want to get this shot? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, let me let you get back to your day. And so she goes, what do you want to shoot? I'm like, fuck, I don't know. Like, uh, that day I was a little hungover, to be honest. And I go, Tori, I'm a little hungover today. You got any hangover remedy? She goes, I got it. I'm like, all right, sweet. I'm like, let's go outside really quick. So we go outside. And I film this shot and I'm thinking in my head, I'm literally directing Tori Spelling right now because I told her, this is how I'm going to shoot it. This is what I'm going to say. This is what I need you to say. And we're going to walk this way. Are you ready? She goes, yeah. I'm like, okay, fucking action then. So whip the <laughs> camera up. <laughs> I go, hey, Tori, I was out with my boys last night. I drank a little bit too much. I'm having a rough one today. Do you have any hangover remedies? She goes, I do. The best hangover remedy is sex. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? And she's like, <laughs> when I'm hungover, I just, I, I, I tell my husband, I just need to have some good sex. And I'm like, okay. And then I stop recording. She goes, how is that? I'm like, fucking great. Tori It was amazing. I turn it into the office. The office runs it on the show. And that was essentially my experience with Tori Spelling. I had later met her husband, Dean, for um, like a creative pitch. Because at the time, I was developing a lot of reality, con yeah. a lot of original concepts for reality TV. And I remember meeting him in Sherman Oaks for ice cream one day with my uh, business partner, Josh. And honestly, guys, this is something I feel like I missed out on in my life, is being able to really tap into the connection that I had with her. Um, I feel like um, I had an impact on her so much so that she wrote about it in her book. And this is the thing where you're like, it's this feeling of being so close, being so close to cracking this door open or cracking the next level in the game open. But it didn't it didn't it didn't uh, go anywhere else. Um, we don't have a bad relationship whatsoever, but we just kind of fell out of contact. Summer ended. She went home. I think she, at the time she was living in Calabasas and that was it. It was kind of this fleeting feeling of, ah, oh, man, it's, it's, it's so happy. It's a friendship it's kind of you never sad. got to have. Yeah. It's bittersweet, man.
And so I remember one morning driving to the office at 7.15, 7.30 a.m. and Andrea Fabrizio called me. She was one of the correspondents in the office and she goes, oh my God, Trevor, did you know Tori Spelling wrote about you in her book? And I'm like, what, 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 what fucking book? And she's like, Tori Spelling just released this book and she talks about you in it. So I fucking race to the Grove, go to Barnes and Noble, go upstairs, find the book and I start reading it. And dude, it like literally like made me cry because she, she's so sweet and you get a sense of who she is and what she's gone through in her life, how she grew up having the parents she did. And then just being fucking just chewed to pieces by Hollywood and trying to remain a wholesome mother of two while trying to, you know, um, lead a successful marriage in front of the public eye. She's, she's just like a really sweet, genuine woman. God and damn it, then, Trevor. Stop rubbing it in our face. We've been trying to get Tori on the podcast. It hasn't happened. She's not responding to us. And you're sitting <laughs> you want me to, telling us how me to call her husband, Dean? Was. We know we Dean, Dean's, Dean's been on. on. We yeah, you're like, Dean we know on. Dean would do it. Yeah, Dean, Dean was great, too. He had a, a phenomenal interview with us. But we want Tori. Tori! Let's get her, Let's get her dude. Yeah. She's, Tori, if you I, can hear me, it's me. <laughs> it's Trevor, your long lost best friend. We, we want you on the Hollywood Raw, honey. <laughs> <laughs> she was she was an absolute doll. Um, you know, and as I'm about to make my my next trip back to moving to uh, L.A., she's somebody in my uh, my Rolodex, honestly, that I'd like to to tap back into. Yeah, yeah, I love it. So th- great story, story, dude. I love that. That's awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah. You uh, so we do a speed round. We, you want to do a speed round, Dex? Yeah, let's do it. So we do a speed round. I want to just see like who's the first thing that pops your head. You know, um, we're gonna ask you a bunch of questions, Trevor, and uh, yeah, just kind of think about who who comes to your mind when when you hear the question. All right, I'm gonna start it off. Ready? The nicest celebrity. Nicest celebrity. Um, man, why you gotta do this to me, Adam? Uh, the nicest celebrity, I mean, I could say Tori Spelling, but we, we don't want to be, uh, uh, repetitious redundant. here yep. in that. Yeah. Redundant in that, um, nicest celebrity. I like David Spade. No, oh, he is a nice one. How about the funniest celeb? That's going to be tough. Now that we just said David, Spade, uh, too. Jaleel White. Really? Did yeah, not Jaleel expect White. that one. I don't even know how I fucking remembered that, but I remember shooting him one night and he was fucking hysterical. He was super, super cool. And I loved Urkel growing up. So that was cool. That's cool. Uh, best looking in person male. Uh, oh, male. I was going to say female. Uh, best looking person in male. Well, I, I had mentioned McSteamy to you yesterday. He was he was pretty good looking. Yeah, you said McSteamy brought you into uh, no- Novo Malibu? Yeah, had a new Nagi role waiting for me, Adam. What, what did he do? He saw you and just waved you in and said, hey, come on in. And uh, This again is in Malibu, Nobu Japanese restaurant. Him and his buddies were entering one night and I caught them going in and I literally just said, hey, what are you going to eat tonight? I didn't have anything. This is what like working at night for TMZ was easier because you're either going to a restaurant or you're going to a club. That's it. And if you know the person's inside, you've got time to develop questions. So I didn't know he was coming. So I just had to get something on camera, something real quick. And so as he's going in, I'm like, what's up boys? What are we drinking tonight inside Nobu? That was like literally it. And he's like, oh, sake. And so he goes inside. I go back to my car and one of his buddies comes out. And he goes, hey, which one of you guys asked Eric about the sake? I was like, oh, it's me. He goes, cool. He's inside. He wants to wants to talk to you. I'm like, what the fuck do you mean he's inside? And he wants to talk to me. He goes, come on, come on, come on. He wants to buy you something to eat. Come inside. I'm like, okay. So all the paps are looking at me like, how's this shit always happening to you, dude? <laughs> so I run to my car. I put the camera down. And then I go into Nobu. Again, a Mr. Chow-like experience. I've been outside of this place for so many times wondering what the inside even fucking looks like, smells like, sounds like. I go inside, fucking sensory overload. And I go into this room. And he's sitting at a round table with like four homies of his. And he has this unagi roll waiting for me and unagi roll guys you know what it is okay Mm -hmm. it's eel with a little bit of eel sauce and an avocado on top absolutely fucking delicious waiting for me sitting there and he goes hey bro he goes have a seat i'm like what'd you do to this thing dude like am i about to eat this and just (laughs) keel over in the car afterward and he literally just picked my brain he goes like what do you, what do you, what do you do? Like, what's this job about? Some celebrities were so genuinely interested in it because they don't have any fucking clue as to what it is. They are just on the receiving end of flash photography and questions being asked. 
So it was maybe 20 minutes of me just sitting in there having a glass of water and a new Nagi roll and talking a little shop with him. So that was interesting. But yeah, he, he was a handsome cat. That's dope. Okay. What about the best looking uh, female? Ava celebrity? Mendez. Yeah. Ava Mendez. I shot her at the Grove. She was wearing a red uh, and black plaid kind of like half buttoned uh, flannel. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my gosh. She didn't say a damn word to me. And I'm like, Ava, don't say nothing, baby. Just, just keep it. Just keep walking. I'm going to tell the <laughs> office to play this in slow-mo. <laughs> Gorgeous, who, dude. Uh, who got you starstruck? Wow. Uh, good one. Um, who got me starstruck? Um, I don't know, dude. I wouldn't get starstruck that often, to be honest. No, there's not a single celebrity you ran into that you're just like, holy shit, this is insane. I like seeing George St. Pierre. Okay. If you guys know who that is. Yeah, sure. UFC. UFC Hall of Fame. He was cool. Um, it's so hard for me to rack my brain, like on who who I've shot, when I shot them. Um, I think I was more starstruck, honestly, when I would see the celebrity when I wasn't working. Mm -hmm. Because the camera gave me a sense of confidence and it gave me a purpose for talking to these people. Whereas in real life, like I remember seeing Scott Disick and Bootsy Bellows one night on uh, Halloween. And I just remember going, the Lord. And he's just like, hey, it's it's me. And I'm like, the fucking Lord. Uh, okay, what about uh, the the scariest celeb? Um, Nick Nolte was never cool. Nah, he liked, he liked cool. to throw water bottles. Yeah, he's not not a nice Starstruck, guy. though, real quick. Uh, Steven Spielberg, Tom Hanks. Okay. That was cool. That was yeah. cool. I'm a big Saving Private Ryan fan, and that was that was cool. Yeah. Um Mark Cuban big, was another one. Great guy. Dax loves him. Yeah, um, I do love I, him. Yeah. Uh, the biggest phony. The biggest phony. What do you mean by phony, uh, Adam? They're just not like the person you think they're going to be. On TV, they, uh, oh. when you see on camera, they're yep. like, oh, they're so nice. And in person, yep. like, they're not that person. I, I did not like the fucking Golden State Warriors. Really? Yeah. But I'm talking about the whole team. Okay? There was like seven of them out in front of... Mr. Chow one night in Beverly Hills and I got a tip on them and they're all just waiting outside. This is before Steph Curry's fucking Steph Curry, right? It's like Steph Curry in the making and he's just starting to get an ego. And I'm like, you fucking guys aren't even from Los Angeles. You're from San Francisco. So the press I'm about to give you, I would, I would hope for a, 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 a more, uh, a, a, a more wholesome reaction to it. They were like, bro, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I'm like, you guys aren't cool at all. That sucks, man. Lakers, baby. All right. What about who's the biggest celeb name you have in your phone? Oh, good one. Uh, the first one that comes to mind is Suge Knight. <laughs> How about that? That's okay. Good. That is a, That's a good one. That is a random number for you to have. Uh, yeah. And to be honest, the way he I've got both of his numbers, actually. Oh, wow. You got three Suge Knights. Yeah, Suge Knight. I, I know we're doing a speed round, but that story's crazy as to how that number was acquired. Yeah, talk about the next time you come on, because mm -hmm. I feel like we, we, we're just like... We didn't even... Yeah, I feel like we've got a lot to still talk to you about. There's, the there's literally, the we have like notes about all the things we want to talk to you about, and I'm like, we are not through half of them, but we're already an hour <laughs> into this, so yep, yep. this is going to be part one of Trevor's interview. Part two right on. is going to come back to you for sure. Part two, we're going to have Tori Spelling do a little, little, little cameo. <laughs> Yeah, we're surprised. Sorry, can you hear me? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, biggest entourage. Biggest entourage. Can you elaborate, Adam? The most people in their party, their posse, like they just roll deep. Oh, roll deep. Uh, biggest entourage. Good question. Who rolled deep? Mayweather kind of always had a bit of a crew with him, mm -hmm. but he was always nice. That dude would always like you know, part the seas of security and, and share a little bit of conversation. But uh, I, I remember him rolling pretty deep. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger at the time, I think he was a government official and uh, he, he had a good security detail. Um, who else? Uh, Lindsay Lohan was going to court all the time. She was fucking jam packed with lawyers and shit all around her. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about uh, who's the biggest asshole you've ran into? Um, Brad Garrett's a good one. 
Mm-hmm. Not nice. Nick Nolte was never cool. Um, biggest asshole. Um, oh, he wasn't an asshole, but this one, this one stuck with me. It was Russell Crowe. Okay. Russell Crowe wasn't an asshole, but he told me to pull my pants up. And at the time, you know, sagging was very in, you know, it was a fashion, <laughs> it was a fashion staple of mine. Yeah. And I, I look back and I see pictures of myself. I go, God damn it. Like Russell Crowe was fucking right. Because <laughs> my, my pants are halfway down my ass. I don't have a belt on. I'm using my left hand to just hold the front of my pants up as I am in flip flops in Beverly Hills, just a San Diego fucking surf rat chasing Russell Crowe. And he just goes, mate, pull your pants up. Like, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my last question is who was the celebrity that you ran into the most? Probably Kim K. Really? Yeah. I would run into Kim K a lot. Um, we never got into like a first name basis. So at least she wasn't on a first name basis with me, did obviously. She, oh, wait, did she ever talk to you? Yeah, but it wasn't very like personal. It was more oh. like she was just answering my questions and shit. But I remember when she was dating uh, Reggie Bush. And she was at a coffee shop on Robertson. I think it was like Starbucks, like North Robertson. And I got there 20 seconds too late. And I'm just seeing Reggie Bush's, was it her car, his car? Black Bentley drive down the street. I, I think it was on Doheny, actually. So they're driving down the street. And I go, fuck. I call Diana. I go, Diana, I just missed them. Like I showed up, parked the car. And she goes, stay right there. Hold on. Hangs up. And I'm watching the Bentley get farther and farther down the street. And then all of a sudden it flips a bitch. And I go, get the fuck out of here. And it's coming back. So that means <laughs> Diana fucking called Kim and was like, hey, um, my cameraman Travis showed up today. Can you turn around and let him get a shot? Oh, yeah, sure. So they flip the fucking car around like a mile away and they come back. She literally, this is what's so crazy about all this shit is like they know what they're doing. She gets out, doesn't look for me, doesn't do any of that, walks in the coffee joint, walks out of the coffee joint just so I could get a shot. But I would see her all the time. Love it. Okay, what is the best celebrity hotspot in LA? Court. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, court, dude. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> it's a popping club, but it opens early. Yeah. He's, he's um, got- I don't know. Hot spot, I would say, uh, at the time at least, um, Craig's. Craig's. Probably still is. I've never eaten there, but apparently the food's good. They got to be doing something right in there for all these. Who, who have you seen at Craig's? Uh, the first person that comes to mind is Rumor Willis. Um, oh, Duck thank Dynasty. God you know who Rumor Willis is. Yeah, of course, dude. You better. You better. <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing in L.A. if you don't know who Rumor Willis is? Um, uh, Duck Dynasty. We did a couple of fucking Eskimo kisses with our beards. That was fun. Um, I remember seeing Ronda Rousey out there. Absolute sweetheart. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, a lot, a lot of people coming out of, coming out of there. Oh, I remember shooting John Voigt coming out of, uh, Craig's one night and my, we'll have to talk about this shit later guys. Cause I have, this is one of my favorite clips is shooting John Voigt at, uh, LAX where he takes the camera out of my hand and turns it on me. Cause you're not interviewing me. I'm interviewing you today. I'm like, well, let's go baby. Trying to give me some camera time. And it was one of my favorite clips ever so much so that I, I saved it. Great clip, got a lot of kudos from the office, but then like literally a year and a half later, I shoot him coming out of Craig's and John Voigt fucking destroyed me. I asked him about brushing his teeth or something like that. Uh Like, do you ever brush your teeth in public? Do you carry a toothbrush with you? Something along the lines of like, do you floss before you brush or do you brush before you floss type shit? And he was just like, what the fuck kind of reporting is this? Like, <laughs> rip the shit like, out of your TMZ questions. Yep. And I got in a lot of trouble for it. The office, for whatever reason, didn't like me asking TMZ questions that night. Hmm. So that was yeah, interesting. Craig's. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, Trevor, I, this, again, this is going to be part one because there's so much stuff that we got to get into. Uh, but Trevor, you know, make sure you guys follow Trevor at Trevor Wayne, T R E V O R, Wayne. W-A-Y-N-E, and he's got a YouTube page where uh, Trevor's going to be coming back out soon. Like, Trevor's too good at this job to not be doing it soon. It's I'm just, blushing uh, under this beard, Adam. Yeah, no, he, <laughs> Trevor's great. I mean, listen, he, he knows what he's doing. He's got a good personality. He was just, he was fun. He enjoyed doing the job. So, uh, Trevor, thank you again for coming on. Make sure you guys follow him at Trevor Wayne. Uh, thank you, buddy. Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. It was a pleasure. Yes, I can't believe so an hour much, went by so fast. What a story. I mean, he's such a good storyteller. Uh, 
Trevor. Trevor, he's I mean, a great storyteller, and that's why I'm like, we're absolutely having him back. Uh, yeah. 100%. This is just part one. We will definitely have a part two. I know that there's more stories that uh, we need to get out of him. Wait, did I ever tell you about my Aubrey O'Day story? No. So I met her outside a hotel one day, and I interviewed her too. And we kind of had a like, "What's up? What's up?" And then I like got her number. She's like, "Hey, take down my number. Let's like hang out." And her friend with I don't know if it was her assistant, I don't know if it was publicist. Like, wait, oh. is this prior to <laughs> her and Trevor or or I, after? I, actually, I, I don't know. I I forget roughly time wise. I mean, either before or after. It wasn't during. Yeah, she's just um, into the camera guys. I like it. She was just, but her friend with her was like, oh, you are not talking. You are not hanging out with this guy. I was like, what? <laughs> what? Come on, man. And uh, I think I, I still have the number in my phone. I've never used it, and I don't probably plan on it, but unless she wants to come on the podcast. Yeah, Aubrey. Uh, but very cool. I mean, just, you don't understand that. I mean, you do understand, but, like, we just had the most interesting kind of job. Like, the stuff that kind of fell on our lap was just so exciting every day. It is. It's just you never know what's going to happen, and it just gets very surreal at times. And, you know, Trevor's, like, the perfect example of it. Like, just the stuff that fell on his lap from getting called into Nobu to, like, being inside Tori Spelling's vacation home and just, like, unloading her groceries with her. Like, it's just it, – Every day is different because it. it just gets into a really weird situation. But it's fun. that's what makes our podcast so fucking great, by the way, is getting these fun stories from all these people and all their interactions with celebrities. All right. That's right. The more we do this podcast, the more I love it. But anyway, all right, guys, we've got to wrap this up. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Make sure you follow us on social media. We are all over the place. We got our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, which I need to update our TikTok. I haven't done much for that side. Uh, anyway, we got our private Facebook page off the record where we uh, chat and hang out with the rest of you guys. Anything that you guys want to talk directly to us, that's where you can find us because we're reading all your comments, your messages, your feedback, everything. And basically, after we release an episode, I go straight to Facebook to see what you guys uh, liked, didn't like, what you got out of it. So if you want to join us there, that's where you can. And uh, make sure you head on over to iTunes, find our um, our show page, scroll down to the bottom and leave us a review. It means a lot and it helps us get discovered by other people out there who might also be into entertainment or celebrity news or behind the scenes stories from uh, camera guys and bodyguards and all of that. So thank you guys so much for joining us this week and we'll see you next time. Bye. What's up, guys? If you like that video, there's plenty more that came from. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell so we can just feed you all the goodness daily. Hurry up. Come on. Let's go.